It's a sad cinematic truth. Many movies are nowhere near as entertaining as their epic, exciting trailers suggest. What are trailers but semi-spoilery commercials designed to get butts in seats anyhow? Once that thrilling, transcendent trailer lures you into a sticky theater with a bucket of popcorn under your arm, you find out the horrible truth. Here are just a few epic trailers that were wasted on disappointing movies. Prometheus after 15 years away from the Alien franchise, Prometheus promised to be a groundbreaking return to form for director Ridley Scott. Plus, we'd totally get to see, like, billions of xenomorphs, right? Or see where they came from? Maybe have coffee with that space jockey guy? He seemed cool. The first trailer does an amazing job of reminding the audience just how awesome the Aliens franchise can be, despite its long time out of theaters and that whole Alien vs. Predator thing. The name Prometheus fades in just like Alien, and we slowly catch glimpses of elements from the original movie. In the space of one minute, it's a masterclass in visual storytelling, and tons of trailers have copied the same format. But despite average to positive reviews, Prometheus never hit the same highs as Alien, and it just left audiences with even more questions. Judging by the trailer, however, it could have been much, much more. And would it kill Ridley Scott to throw in a few more xenomorphs? The Phantom Menace in the dark ages before YouTube, watching movie trailers was hard. You had to know which films the trailers were attached to and hope your theater was showing the right ones. When the trailer for The Phantom Menace dropped, fans were so hyped that they bought tickets to other movies just to see the trailer, not even staying for the movie afterwards. All through November 1998, theaters sold out tickets to movies like A Bug's Life, only to have the seats empty out before the opening titles even rolled. We all know how The Phantom Menace turned out, but the trailer was actually really good. The opening shot of a fog-covered swamp with the Force theme is still spine-tingling. The visuals look awesome, and even the awkward Yoda lines feel epic. It's so good it almost makes us want to go back and watch Episode 1 again. Almost. In the Heart of the Sea Wailing doesn't top many lists of things there aren't enough movies about. But In the Heart of the Sea looked like it was ready to change that. This trailer had everything. Beautiful cinematography, cool special effects shots, some kind of secret water monster, and Thor looking badass holding a spear. What's not to love? The trailer was so good that at least 4 million people watched it on purpose, many of whom never even knew they wanted to see a whaling movie. Unfortunately, the only good things about the movie were all packed into the trailer. Despite being stocked with talented actors and having Ron Howard in the director's chair, the film never connected with the audience. It earned a meager 42% on Rotten Tomatoes, with reviewers mostly calling the film boring, unconvincing, and dry. Which is saying something, considering the movie takes place in the water. In the end, all it did was prove that not even Chris Hemsworth's rippling muscles can save a sinking ship. Battle Los Angeles most movie trailers are just made of attractive scenes slapped together in some kind of coherent order, but a few become pieces of art on their own. Battle Los Angeles is pure trailer art. Opening with shots of UFO sightings from around the world, it gave us a feast of the best visuals for the movie, set to Johan Johansson's Haunting Part 5. The movie looked like a mixture of Saving Private Ryan and Independence Day, a reinvention of the alien invasion genre. Or so we thought. In reality, Battle Los Angeles earned poor ratings for a reason. Roger Ebert gave the film one half of a star and called it ugly and stupid, continuing, If you attend this crap with friends who admire it, tactfully inform them they are idiots. The trailer was another story. It was so good, in fact, that two years later, Edge of Tomorrow copied it shot for shot and even used another Johan Johansson song as its soundtrack, only this time the movie actually delivered on its trailer's promise. Tron Legacy 1982's Tron acquired a cult following after mediocre returns at the box office. Decades after the original whiffed, the studio tried hard to make Tron trendy, and with their awesome trailer for Tron Legacy, they almost succeeded. There are many things to love about the trailer for Legacy. Nostalgia, great music, neon junk everywhere, and who could forget Olivia Wilde? 11 million views on YouTube proved that the world was ready for a Tron sequel, until it actually came out. USA Today summed up viewer sentiments, calling it impenetrable and nonsensical. Despite its excellent trailer, it failed to win over critics or restart the franchise. Even today, people only remember it for its soundtrack. And maybe that's the best way to look at it. A two-hour-long Daft Punk music video. The Last Airbender It seemed like the movie that was going to save M. Night Shyamalan from himself. All he had to do was adapt the story of a hit franchise, write semi-competent dialogue, and ride the brand recognition of The Last Airbender all the way to the bank. This was a slam dunk, and the trailer tricked us into thinking he'd scored. It had all the elements that we loved from the cartoon show, faithfully adapted to live action. 
It even actually looked good. And then it bombed. At 6% on Rotten Tomatoes, The Last Airbender is the lowest-rated Shyamalan film, and that includes The Happening, the movie where trees are the villains. The Atlantic compared the film to a chronic illness that worsens and worsens without ever quite proving terminal. Time magazine also summoned up specters of death, saying, The actors who didn't get to be in The Last Airbender are like the passengers who arrived too late to catch the final flight of the Hindenburg. Oh, the humanity! But perhaps one fan said it best. I want my money back. Wow. And I actually wish I had my hair back, too. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love, too.